Welcome back guys, stick drift is a phenomenon when the sticks of the gamepad register ghost inputs, for example our in-game character moving or looking around automatically even when we are not moving the sticks. Modern day gamepads that use the conventional potentiometer based sticks are prone to stick drift. In order to counter it, many gamepad manufacturers have started switching to Hall effect sticks. These sticks use magnets to generate a signal. In simpler terms, they are immune to stick drift. This is why a couple of months ago I switched to Gully Kit KK3 Max Gamepad. It comes with Hall effect sticks and triggers. The sticks are even replaceable. Supports 3 connectivity modes, wired, 2.4 GHz wireless and Bluetooth. X input mode supported by all 3 connectivity modes. Even has gyro. You can create macros, even assign certain buttons to turbo function. Back grip buttons are also present on the back side. But this gamepad is expensive. Sells for around 70 US dollars. In India it's not even available. If you import the gamepad, it's going to cost you a lot. What if I told you that you could purchase a gamepad with similar features that cost even slightly less than half of the price of Gullikit KK3 Max? Yes, I'm serious. A gamepad like this exists. Its name is Cosmic Bytes Stellaris. In this video, I'll be reviewing it. In India, it sells for around Rs. 2600 to 3000 depending on the sale. Here's the gamepad. I have the black color variant. A transparent edition of this gamepad also exists. It's rupees 100 more expensive than the black variant. I purchased the gamepad from Cosmic Bytes website for around rupees 2900. That's roughly around 34 US dollars. I've been using the gamepad for almost a month now. Very impressed by its performance. I've used many gamepads in the past. It's one of the best budget gamepads I have ever used. I'll quickly show you the box contents. The packaging was very good. You can see the box. Inside the box, you'll be getting two pairs of sticks. This pair has a concave design. This pair has a convex design. The default sticks of the gamepad have a concave design. The sticks are replaceable. Just quickly show you this. Pull out the stick. There you go. Installation process is fairly simple. Just use the convex stick. Push it in. As simple as that. Highly recommend it to use thumb grips in order to prevent the wear and tear of the sticks. If you frequently use the gamepad, the rubber will melt away over time. Then you have the bill, type C to type A, charging cable. For the purpose of charging this gamepad, Cosmic Pied recommends using a charger with an output of 5V and 2A. Gamepad's battery has a capacity of 1000mAh. Its battery backup is actually good. I use the gamepad for about 10 hours with all of the LEDs enabled and vibration intensity set to max. Remaining battery percentage was around 50. A user manual will also be present inside the box explaining all of the features of this gamepad. You can configure the gamepad using the gamepad itself. A third party software is not required. I'll be showing you all of its configuration in the later part of the video. This USB dongle is also included with the gamepad. Using it, you can connect the gamepad to your PC via 2.4 GHz band wireless mode. Now we have the gamepad itself. I'll quickly talk about its design. The design is inspired by Gullikit KK3 Max gamepad, which itself is inspired by Xbox controller. There's nothing wrong with that. I really love the design of the original Xbox gamepad. Stellaris is lightweight. According to Cosmic Pad, it weighs around 260 grams. It's definitely lighter than my DualSense controller. Gamepad fits very nicely in my hands. My hands are small. The grip handles sit right at the center of my hands. Trigger and bumper buttons are within my reach. On the front side, we have a matte finish. We're talking about the buttons present here. They have a bumpy feedback. Face buttons have LED lighting. Xbox layout. They are not removable. Cosmic Byte calls this button as turbo button. This one as home button, this one as capture button, this one as back button, and this one as select button. These LED indicators indicate the mode and certain functions of the gamepad. For example, if you want to check the charge level of the gamepad, just press the turbo and back buttons together for a few seconds. Press and hold. Remaining battery 75% approximately. Gamepad uses an asymmetrical design for the Hall effect sticks. These sticks move like butter, very easy to maneuver them. The resting thumb area is smooth. Around the perimeter, we have a striped design. D-pad buttons are a bit soft to press. These are actually good for executing the diagonal presses. I'll demonstrate this in the later part of the video. RGB lighting is present around both of the sticks. 
at the bottom we have a 3.5 mm input port i didn't even bother to test it if you have a high end headset avoid using this port even the ports present on premium game pads produce an average sound quality however if you want to use this port just connect the game pad to your pc via wired mode the port is not going to work in either of the wireless modes let's check the top side from this angle you can see the protrusion for the buttons on the front side okay on the top we have the trigger and bumper buttons they don't come with a textured finish they come with a smooth and shiny finish type c port for the purpose of connectivity and charging the game pad sync button it will set the game pad in pairing mode bumper buttons are a bit short micro switches are used and hear the clicky sound these are hall effect triggers smooth and linear barely make any sound see the travel distance here let's check out the back side both grip handles come with a textured finish i hope the finish is visible then we have the trigger lock switches just need to flip the switch to as the trigger in order to transform it into a button like this it will reduce the travel distance for the trigger yeah it's getting jammed remove the lock there you go full travel distance then we have two macro buttons mr and ml on one side the macro button is recessed with the chassis on the other side it's slightly elevated you can map the face trigger and bumper buttons to any of these back grip buttons but you cannot map the l3 and r3 buttons to them this is disappointing last but not least we have the mode switch this is very important let me just zoom in first we have the nintendo switch pro mode i'll just flip the switch towards it now the game pad will be detected as a switch pro controller on your windows pc and even steam deck use the game pad in this mode when you want to use its gyro feature mode is supported over all three connectivity modes you can configure its gyro controls using steam input however in this mode the triggers will not be pressure sensitive they will work as digital switches next we have the android mode just flip the switch towards it there you go according to cosmic bite in this mode the game pad works in d input mode i tested many android games with this game pad running in this mode the games detected the game pad as an xbox controller next we have the ios mode again in this mode the game pad was detected as an xbox controller even on android platform on windows platform the same thing will happen the game pad will work in x input mode xbox controller This means you won't be required to use a third party software like Steam input or DS4 Windows in order to get the gamepad working with games. Again this mode is compatible with all three connectivity modes. Last but not least we have the Windows mode. According to Cosmic Byte in this mode the gamepad will work as a pro controller, basically an Xbox controller, but the triggers won't be pressure sensitive. I tested this mode on my Windows PC. The triggers were still pressure sensitive. Gamepad worked as an Xbox controller. but when i tested this mode on my steam deck the triggers were not pressure sensitive they were working as digital switches even gyro is not supported by this mode gyro is only supported by switch pro mode setting the mode to ios game pad will work in x input mode will be connecting it to my windows pc via bluetooth mode this is my rock ally handheld pc running on windows 11 just open windows bluetooth settings enable bluetooth already enable click on add device then click on bluetooth now press and hold the game pad sync button for a few seconds until the led light start blinking couple of seconds like this there's xbox wireless controller select it connecting upon a successful connection led lights will stop blinking like this steady light just ran the game pad led test for this game pad connected to my pc over bluetooth mode these are the results got a polling rate of around 125 hertz stability 81% average latency was less than 10 milliseconds practically speaking you should not be observing any noticeable input delay while using the gamepad over bluetooth mode as an xbox controller now you are ready to use the gamepad with games that officially supports xbox controller you can still configure the gamepad using steam using steam input you can remap the gamepad controls even assign mouse and keyboard controls to any of the gamepad buttons i'll show you the process just open steam 
if you are using a non steam game just add the games exe file to your steam library click on library then click on add a game add a non steam game click on browse navigate to a directory where the games exe file is present just like this double click game will be added to your library now just click on steam settings this window will pop up just click on controller here name of the gamepad will be shown xbox one controller test device inputs begin test in this mode the triggers will be pressure sensitive as you can see not working as a digital switch you can test all of the controls proper xbox controller gamepad rumble can be enabled or disabled from here this gamepad has two vibration motors they produce a linear vibration vibration strength is mild even on the highest level check these two settings enable steam input for xbox controllers and enable steam input for switch pro controllers the gamepad can be calibrated from here click on open right next to calibration and advanced settings joysticks press the a button to configure them first we have the left joystick the smaller circle inside the bigger circle is the dead zone area press y to configure it test the dead zone this area is the dead zone you can adjust the dead zone area using this slider i increase the dead zone area decreasing it no dead zone at all stick will be very sensitive and just use the default setting reset by pressing the x button it's the same thing for right joystick press the r1 key there you go you can configure it as well game rumble settings can be accessed from here as well now i'll show you how to use steam input for any game for example let's say resident evil 5 select the game in your steam library and just click on this game pad icon here as i have already enabled steam input here i am seeing the option to disable steam input this is the layout that i am using official layout click on edit layout you can see the face and bumper buttons here you cannot map the back re buttons using steam input d pad buttons triggers joysticks let's say i want to customize the b button just click on the bar next to it now you can remap the controls i'll just map l3 button to it just an example there you go control function has been changed now i'll map a keyboard key to it press on the bar again click on keyboard there's the virtual keyboard and just map h keyboard key to b button of the gamepad it has been done the process is as simple as that now i'll just map a mouse key to the b button left mouse click it's done i'll just use the default key b in this mode you won't be able to use the gamepad's gyro controls you need to run the gamepad as a switch pro controller time to flip the switch towards nintendo like this we need to reconnect the gamepad open the bluetooth settings bluetooth enable click on add device click on bluetooth same process as before press and hold the sync button for a few seconds until the led lights start blinking there you go gamepad detected as a pro controller click it connect it done open steam go to controller setting gamepad should be detected as a switch pro controller like this test device input calibration you need to calibrate the gyro controls unfortunately i am observing a connectivity issue gamepad is disconnecting and reconnecting automatically why would this problem does not occur when we are playing a game only happens when steam is open if you want to use the gamepad in switch pro mode i would recommend using the 2.4 gigahertz pan usb or even wired connection and just go to gyro calibration here you can see gyro controls are working place the gamepad on a flat surface like this now click on calibrate continue process started you need to do the calibration process for each connectivity mode yeah calibration complete and check use nintendo button layout now when i press the triggers of the gamepad they are detected as digital switches starting test there you go they are not pressure sensitive 
this is what happens when you use the gamepad as a switch pro controller not recommended for racing games now i'll be connecting the gamepad to ally via 2.4 gigahertz band wireless mode just using this otg adapter green led light should be blinking on the adapter now just press and hold the sync button for a few seconds led light should become stable there you go connection successful just open steam controller setting by default the gamepad run as an xbox 360 controller if you want to run it as a switch pro controller just press and hold the back and select buttons for a few seconds until the mode changes like this there you go gamepad is detected as a nintendo switch pro controller calibrate the gyro controls open gyro calibration place the gamepad on a flat surface then click on calibrate process complete i'll show you how to use gyro controls select a game from your stream library for example resident evil 5 now click on the gamepad icon here gyro behavior by default it's set to none click on the bar next to it from here just select as joystick now click on the settings box next to it click on gyro we need to assign a key to activate gyro scroll down a bit you will find this option gyro activation buttons just click on the bar next to it assign the key that you want to use for activating gyro for example i am using the left trigger so i just need to press and hold the left trigger in order to use the gyro control i will demonstrate this click on the key hold to enable gyro you can change the function here toggle gyro on or off if you want to keep the gyro enabled at all times just select select none go back gyro always on i'll revert the change use the left trigger for activating gyro we are in gamepad is running in switch pro mode steam input is emulating the gamepad as an xbox controller gyro controls will still work there's chris first check out the input response very responsive controls I'll demonstrate the gyro controls. Press and hold the left trigger. First, I need to place the controller properly. Yeah, check out the gyro controls. Sensitivity can be adjusted from Steam input settings. Gyro controls are for fine tune aiming. You can also use the right stick. It's up to you how you want to use it. No issues with the connectivity in this mode. 2.4 GHz span. Reload by pressing the B key. My bad, I don't remember the control. Need to press the A key. Now I'll be demonstrating the wired mode. Before jumping to the wired mode, just wanted to show you the gamepad LA results for this gamepad connected to the PC via 2.4 GHz band wireless mode. Running as an Xbox controller, got a polling rate of around 125Hz, stability of around 116%, not sure if it's correct. The average latency was less than 7 milliseconds, almost 2 milliseconds less than the Bluetooth mode. The wired mode is pretty simple, just connect the type C end of the cable to the gamepad and type A end of the cable to your PC. For my ROG ally, I will be using the type A to type C OTG adapter. Connect it. Here is the sound. Gamepad is working. Set the gamepad in either iOS or Switch Pro mode using the switch on its back side I have set it in iOS mode gamepad will work as an Xbox controller it's charging LED lights are blinking open steam controller setting yeah it's detected as an Xbox 360 controller when the charging is complete LED lights will stop blinking now I'll just switch to the Nintendo mode gamepad will work as a switch pro controller open steam controller settings 
there you go switch pro controller again do the gyro calibration process i did not observe any connectivity issues when using the gamepad and wired mode gamepad let us say cells for the gamepad connected to the pc via wired mode polling rate 125 hertz got a stability of around 109 percent average latency 7.32 milliseconds Average latency here is slightly higher than the average latency that I got when using the gamepad in 2.4 GHz band wireless mode. Still a good result. Now I'll be running the stick circular at it as for Stellaris gamepad. We'll be comparing the result with KK3 Max and DualSense gamepads. All of the gamepads have been connected to LR via wired connection. Stellaris is running in Xbox mode. Check this box. Hardware tester website. Need to move the sticks in complete circles. And yeah, these sticks are very accurate. You can see the average error 0.1%. Amazing. Very easy to maneuver the sticks. As you can see, I'm tracing a circle. Run the same test for KK3 Max gamepad. It's running in Xbox mode. Run the test. Move the stick in complete circles. Average error 0.8%. I'll be honest, it's easier to maneuver this stick than that of Stellaris. So accurate. Dual sense controller. Start the test, same process. Move the stick in complete circles. Average error of 9.5%. And this stick is also very easy to maneuver. So good results here for Stellaris Gamepad. Now I'll be connecting the Gamepad to Steam Deck via Bluetooth mode. Gamepad's mode is set to iOS. It will work as an X input controller. Process is fairly simple. Just go to Steam Deck's Bluetooth settings. This is Steam is running in gaming mode. Press and hold the sync button for a couple of seconds. LED lights will start blinking. And just wait for the controller to show up here under available to pair. There it is, Xbox wireless controller. Connection successful, LED lights have stopped blinking. Yeah, it's working. In this mode, the triggers will be pressure sensitive. Press the triggers. Use this mode when you're playing a racing game. Different values. Now I'll switch to the Windows mode. Gamepad's Pro controller mode. Toggle the switch. Disconnect it. Repeat the same process. Go to Bluetooth. Press and hold the sync button for a few seconds until the LED lights start blinking. There is the gamepad pro controller. Connection successful. Just one LED light is switched on. Switch controller prompts can be seen. Triggers will not be pressure sensitive now. Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. There you go. If you want to use the gamepad's gyro controls on Steam Deck, you need to switch the gamepad's mode to switch controller. We need to do the pairing process again. Hold the sync button. Bluetooth. Wait for the controller to show up. There it is, Pro Controller. Successful connection. Go to controller settings, controller name, switch pro controller. Go to calibration and advanced settings, gyro calibration, there you go. Put the gamepad on a flat surface then tap on calibrate. There you go, this gamepad is fully compatible with SteamOS. Just run Resident Evil 5, configure the gyro behavior as joystick. Use the left trigger to activate gyro. There's Chris. Check out the input response. Bluetooth mode. No issues with the input delay. Use the gyro controls. Need to hold the left trigger. Yeah, it's working. Fine tuning. Shoot. My bad. 
need to press the B key now to reload. Oh no, it's the A key. Now I'll show you how to update the gamepad's firmware. This is done using an Android application called Keylinker. So first you need to connect the gamepad to your Android device in Pro Controller mode. Switch the button to Windows mode. Press and hold the sync button. Open your Android device's Bluetooth settings. Look for the gamepad here. It will show up as Pro Controller. Tap on it. There you go. Open Play Store, then search for Keylink application. There it is. Install. Not a fan of this update process. I don't like installing random Chinese applications on my Android devices. Open. Need to agree to their terms. Give them the permission. Keylink is running. This is why I hate these applications. I will uninstall this application immediately after updating the gamepad. Refresh this page. Yeah, there is the gamepad. CB Stellaris controller detected. Tap on it. Now tap on the three dots here. Tap on update device. Gamepad is running on the latest version. You can configure the gamepad from this app as well. Just tap on the settings cog next to it. Gamepad's controls can be remapped from here. For example, I'll just map the a button function to B button just an example switch A, B, X, Y face buttons and we have joysticks W area indicates the joysticks effective range we can change the range by tapping on these rectangular bars 0 small medium large size of the blue circle got reduced same thing can be done for the right stick in order to apply the change just tap on apply just use the default settings revoke then we have the trigger buttons blue area here indicates the effective range of the trigger small is the default setting medium size got reduced large in the blue area the trigger function will get executed use the default settings motor from here we can adjust the vibration intensity strong left and right motors entirely up to you apply turbo function can be accessed from here as well personally I won't be using this application uninstall very poor review <laughs> app is running in the background eating my device's battery now I'll be trying out a few games just set the gamepad to android mode there you go press and hold the sync button open the Android devices Bluetooth settings. There's the gamepad. CV Stellaris controller. Okay. Running Hitman Blood Bunny reprisal. You can see gamepad is detected as an Xbox controller. There's Agent 47. Check out the input response. Bluetooth mode. How the game is running so smoothly. Shaman Pad 6 for you. Enter the compound. No issues with the input delay. I'll just equip my gun. Start killing people. <laughs> they are shooting at me. Oh my god. What happened to that guy? Went flying. Reload. Out of ammo. <laughs> physics in this game is just insane oh my god <laughs> now i'll test call duty mobile what is this guy doing okay so i was not able to get the gamepad working with this skin as you can see i tried using its different modes none of them work i'll be trying out the next game now i'm running little nightmares gamepad is detected as an xbox controller all of the keys are working mm, yeah this game is a bit creepy body is hanging off the ceiling a bit disappointed that the gamepad did not work with call duty mobile not sure why no issues here now i'll be covering this gamepad's different features i've connected it to my ally wire 2.4 gigahertz band wireless mode 
will be showcasing these features using hardware tester first i'll be covering gamepad's turbo function you can map face bumper and trigger button functions to the turbo button function for example i'll be mapping x function to turbo function in order to do this just need to press and hold the turbo button and then press the x key like this process complete now when i press and hold the x key its function will be simulated as if i am continuously tapping the x key like this see this is the manual turbo function gamepad also supports auto turbo function in order to use it just need to repeat the previous step again press and hold the turbo function button and press the x key now when i press the x key once its function is simulated as if i am continuously tapping the x key now to stop the turbo function just press the key again there you go there are three levels of turbo speed which are indicated by their corresponding led lights first we have the slow level 5 shots per second then we have the medium level 15 shots per second then we have the fast level 25 shots per second this is the slow level 5 shots per second in order to switch to medium level just need to press and hold the turbo button and then move the right stick in the forward direction like this now press the x key 15 shots per second in order to switch to the high level repeat the process again 25 shots per second in order to reduce the speed press and hold the turbo button move the stick in the downward direction there you go in order to remove the turbo function just repeat the first process again press and hold the turbo function button press the key now when i press and hold the x key its normal function is executed this game pad supports four levels of vibration intensity of 30% 70% and 100% in order to increase the level of vibration just need to press and hold the turbo button and then move the left stick in forward direction keep moving the stick in forward direction until you reach the max level of vibration in order to reduce the speed press and hold the turbo button and then move the left stick in the backward direction like this yeah game pad is vibrating vibration stop now i'll be covering the game pad's left and right back grip macro buttons you can map any of the face bumper trigger and d-pad buttons to these back grip macro buttons however you cannot map l3 and r3 functions to these buttons this is a bit disappointing for the purpose of this tutorial i'll be mapping x key to left back grip macro button the process is fairly simple you need to press and hold the turbo button and the left macro button until led 2 and led 3 lights light up like this now press the x key now when i press the left macro button like this its function is simulated as if i am pressing the x key in order to remove the macro just press and hold the turbo button and the left macro button until led 2 and led 3 lights light up now press the left macro button there you go macro has been removed you can even map key combos to these macro buttons for example i'll be mapping a combination of a and b keys will be inserting a delay between them so just press and hold the turbo button then press and hold the right macro button wait for led 2 and 3 lights to light up there you go first i'll press the a key after delay of about 3 seconds i'll press the b key save i'll execute the macro function a key was pressed b key should be pressed automatically after a few seconds there you go Now I'll be covering the game pads LED lights in order to turn on or off the game pads face buttons LED light just need to hold the bumper buttons for about 6 seconds like this There you go switch on the lights by repeating the same process 6 seconds worked for enabling or disabling the LED lights of the joysticks you need to hold the trigger buttons for about 6 seconds like this There you go lights got disabled enable them by holding the triggers for 6 seconds again worked led lighting's brightness level can be increased by pressing and holding the back button and then pressing the up d pad button decrease the brightness by holding the back button and then pressing the down d pad button lights got disabled increase the brightness to max 
currently I'm using the joystick RGB mode for my gamepad. LED lights around the sticks light up only when I move the joysticks. I can change the color of the LED light by pressing and holding the select button and then pressing the right D-pad button. See color change. The gamepad comes with three RGB color modes. First we have the mixed color wave. This is the default mode. It's basically a cyclic variation of different colors. Then we have the color breathing mode. In this mode the color automatically breathes and changes every second. Lastly we have the single color mode. In order to access these RGB color modes we need to disable the joystick RGB mode. In order to do that just need to press and hold the back button and then press the left D-pad button. There you go. This is the mixed color RGB mode. In order to change the mode just press and hold the select button then press the left D-pad button. This is the color breathing mode. I'll switch to the static color, press and hold the select button, then press the left D-pad button. There you go. The color around the LED sticks is not changing. You can change the individual color, just need to press and hold the select button and then press the right D-pad button. Different colors. Entirely up to you. Now in case some gamepad settings are not working properly, you can factory reset the gamepad settings. Just need to press and hold the turbo and back buttons for about 6 seconds. You can even factory reset the controller's hardware. Just need to press and hold the home button for about 10 seconds. In order to switch off the gamepad, just need to press and hold the home button for about 3 seconds. Like this. Turn it on. You can swap the functions of D-pad buttons and left stick. All you need to do is press the capture button twice, like this. Gamepad will vibrate. Now when I move the stick, it works as a D-pad buttons. And when I press the D-pad buttons, they work as the left stick, as you can see. Go back to the default function, press the capture button twice again. Working normally. Now check out the D-pad buttons. Web design. It's very easy to execute the diagonal presses like this. I'm just pressing the D-pad button on its bottom left edge. Like this. Bottom right edge. Good for fighting games. Top right edge. Top left. These buttons are a bit soft to press. Time to conclude the video. Stellaris is an excellent gamepad for its price. Priced at around 31 to 35 US dollars. Comes with all effects, sticks and triggers. Two programmable macro buttons. Even supports turbo function. Good battery life. 1000 mAh battery. Type-C port for charging. LED lights are present for the joysticks and face buttons. Three modes of connectivity are supported. Bluetooth, 2.4 GHz band wireless and wired. The gyro function works on all three connectivity modes. Gamepad has excellent compatibility. It's compatible with Windows based PC, Steam Deck and even Android devices. Both of these sticks are user replaceable. Two extra pairs of sticks are included with the gamepad. As the gamepad supports X input mode, no third party software like Steam input or DS4 Windows is required in order to get the gamepad working with games that officially support Xbox controllers. One thing that I did not like about the gamepad is the process of updating its firmware. We are required to install an application from Play Store, Android platform. It's called Keylinker, Chinese application, and it keeps running in the background, chugs away our device's battery life. You cannot update the gamepad's firmware using your computer. I also ran into a connectivity issue when the gamepad was connected to my PC via Bluetooth mode. Gamepad's mode was set to switch controller mode. Connectivity issue occurred when Steam was running. However, no connectivity issue occurred when I was actually playing the game. This only happened in Bluetooth mode, not the case with wired and 2.4 GHz band wireless mode. I would definitely recommend Cosmic Pad Stellaris to the gamers who are looking for a budget friendly controller. So that's it with the video guys, I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.